What is up, YouTube? Four Leaf Cards here. Thanks so much for clicking. Going through a big haul that I got for really cheap, just a pile of stuff, and um, ran into a nice little box of Frank Thomas that had a lot of unique cards in it. So we're just going through them, just seeing what we got, trying to find some gems. And uh, this is going to be it. We're doing the upper deck pile. Uh, just a little reminder, check out these guys that won my uh, 100 sub, 100 video contest. Uh, really good guys putting out some good videos, so check them out. And I'm gonna put them off to the side because I need to get to these upper deck cards of Frank Thomas, all Frank Thomas. And this is gonna be the end of it. So hopefully, you guys are enjoying just seeing what I found in this big pile of stuff that I bought for cheap. We'll start with this. This is an upper deck swing time, it's kind of a foily card. And there was a whole pile of them there, which is kind of cool. A lot of doubles, triples. Um, actually, I'm finding a lot of doubles of things. Um, certain cards have a lot of kind of like 10 of them or more or whatever, but um, a lot of doubles. So I think I'm going to put one in my PC, and I'm going to put together a uh, maybe a Frank Thomas package. Try to sell that, maybe get some money back here. But, you know, so here's one that's got a bunch of cards probably worth 10 cents um come on focus in but i got a bunch of those okay but then you know so i got two of these so i'll keep one and put one into a frank thomas package see if we can't get get a little bit of the, the money back here that i spent on this big pile of stuff here is some hot list from collector's choice Then and now, this is 94 up in Upper Deck. I remember these cards um, right when I was getting out of collecting. So there's a bunch of these, like, 90s cards in this pile of stuff. So, again, I'm hoping there's some some cool ones as we go through the rest of the pile. But for now, we're just looking at Frank because there was just a, literally a whole box of Frank. There's Frank using a... Swinging warm-up bat, man. That thing is taped up and must be like a lead pipe or something he's swinging with. Um, here's a foily card. On deck with Frank Thomas. Blowing bubbles. Traditional threads. A couple of those. There's Frank giving high fives. Oh, ready for that ball to come. Good form. Very good form. There's Frank giving an interview. A couple of those. Prime nine. Prime nine. Got a couple different varieties here. Four different varieties. I wonder if there's nine. Oh no, there's like 20. This is, oh, more than that. 18, 19, 20, 21. So I'm not sure. Kind of an insert set there. Upper deck MVP. This is really foily, super shiny. Power surge. I think that's power surge. Yep. Nice card there. Got a couple of those. This is a, ooh, a black diamond. Uh, I like these black diamonds. It's nice, shiny, foily, kind of classy looking cards. Ovation. Got a couple of those. These are like um, the seams are raised up on them, embossed. Pretty nice card. And then there's some texture there. Nice looking card. Platinum Power. Best Hitters of the Future, Ted Williams, 1992 Upper Deck. Some more in there, SP. The Home Run Chronicles. Then I got a boatload of Frank, 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 Frank. So a bunch of these uh, 1991 Upper Decks. of those this was a five dollar card marked down to two nice hologram 
Probably more like a dollar these days. 93, Future Heroes. A couple of those. Electric Diamonds. Man, I remember these Electric Diamonds. If you had one, you were like, really cool number one we didn't have a lot of upper deck upper deck to me was like kind of high end like you had to you couldn't just get that anywhere and then number two like okay if you had the electric diamond there's another electric diamond by the way you know those were kind of like i don't know what the uh the odds were but um oh you know what let's learn something and put that down these were like what 94 that's like great when i was getting out 94 i'm pretty sure Let's get our big uh let's get our big standard catalog of baseball out and go to upper deck. 1994 upper deck. 91, 93, 90. Three still 94 upper deck. Oh boy, there's a lot written here about this. So we're gonna learn some something here. Upper Deck's 94 offering was a typical presentation combining high quality regular issue cards with innovative subsets and high tech chase cards. Series one, besides the standard player cards, features subsets including star rookies with metallic borders, fantasy team stars, home field advantage cards, showcasing, so, showcasing national league stadiums and stars under the age of 25. In a subset titled "The Future Is Now," so we got we had some of that. Frank Thomas, regular issue cards feature a color photo on front and a second black and white version of the same photo uh, at left in a vertically stretched format, which is right there. That is correct. <coughs> the player's name, team, and upper deck logo appear on the front in copper foil. Backs have a color photo, stats, and infield shape hologram. Series 2 offered, in addition to regular cards, subsets of American League home field advantage cards, a group of classic alumni, minor league players, a selection of diamond debut cards, and a group of top prospects. Series 1 retail packaging contained a special Mickey Mantle Ken Griffey Jr. card that could be found bearing either one or both of the players' autographs in, addition, in an addition of 1,000 each. Series 2 retail packs offered a chance to find an autograph version of A-Rod's classic alumni card. Now, where's the electric diamond? There it is. Each of the regular issue and subset cards from 1994, Upper Deck, was also produced in a limited edition premium insert electric diamond version where the regular cards have the Upper Deck logo, player, and team name in copper foil. The electric diamond version has those elements in a silver prismatic foil along with an electric diamond identification line next to the upper deck logo. Let's bring that down here. Let me focus down a little bit here. There, now we can see the whole card. You can see the shine. Um, silver permission with an electric diamond identification next to the upper deck logo. Backs are identical to the regular cards. 45 of the first series cards can be found with player names on back. In either silver or copper. Silver or copper. This is interesting. I am learning something. I might have missed something here. I did not know there were ver variations on the electric diamonds. Huh. Nothing, nothing going there, though. Uh, electric diamond cards are found on average about every other pack. And it looks like the price in this book is about one and a half times the regular card. So number 300. At this time, it was a 75 cent card. He's probably a little bit less than that now. This is probably a 10 cent, 25 cent card. So maybe the electric diamonds are 50 cent cards. I don't know. Or 10 cents for their base and 25 for the electric diamond if we're looking for pricing. So nothing crazy. Well, at some t some point here, somebody was getting three for these bad boys. Well, trying to get three, two. Um, and 
and then mark it down probably is how that works. Mark it for two, sell it for one, one of those kind of deals. Anyway, so we learned a little something. I'm going to keep this upper deck open just in case we stumble upon something else we want to know. Here's some upper deck retro. So I've got some of those. Here's some more retro. A couple of those. Throwback attack from retro. Let's see what we got here. Drawing power. Cool looking card. Okay, let's take another stack. Um, upper deck. I can't really read that foil. I get need more light here. There's a couple of these. That's kind of a classy looking card. Signing autos, maybe. Some shiny. I feel like we. I might have had that one already. We looked at, but there's a couple of those. Nice foil cards. Here's an MVP. Upper deck MVP. A couple of those. Frank Thomas with kind of a glove leather there. Couple of these predictors that are not scratched. Ooh, Encore. These are nice uh, foily, rainbow foil. Upper deck, best of a generation. Frank Thomas, collector's choice. Here's some special edition. A couple of those. This is some sort of a game. Collector's Edition, you make the play interactive card. All right, let's see what else we got here. I changed the angle on my camera. I, I keep saying this is a loose collection, but I think that's a capital I. IOS, IOS collection. I think he's a really good photographer. This one is numbered, I believe. I've got a bunch of these. Yep, out of 4,500. I got some of these in Nomar and some other players. Spectrum. Look at the shine on that thing. That one's numbered to 1750. It's a nice card. Got two of them. Numbers don't. I love like sister cards where the if you get two cards and the numbers are right next one next to the other, that's pretty cool. All-Star Scratch-Off, McGriff versus Thomas. <coughs> Scratch-Off Rules. 1993, I don't really recall seeing this, some sort of a game. Split the card into two sections. Let's see if this says anything. 1993? Like a game? <coughs> you guys ever seen this? 1993. All-Star Scratch-Off. I am not. Oh, there's the iOS collection. Home Run Heroes, Supers, then and now, 5th anniversary. All Time Heroes, Diamond Gallery, Upper Deck Fun Packs. I bet you it came out of a fun pack. Yep, Fun Packs All-Star Scratch-Off, randomly inserted into Fun Packs with a series of nine All-Star Scratch-Off game cards. Fronts and backs have a star-studded blue background. Inside, the folded double-sized cards are American National League lineups, which can be used to play a baseball game. The rules are explained on the card. On the front are photos of two of the players in the lineup, matched by position from each league. The inserts are numbered with an AS prefix. Cool. It's pretty neat. Predictor from 96, an SP, nice ovation gold foil there, at one time worth eight, maybe four dollars, probably worth a lot less now, Premier Power, here's a hologram from 92 maybe, I think it's 92. 
There's a predictor. I've got marbling. Big Frank. A couple of those. Hmm. Foily shiny. Not numbered. Major League Baseball. It's got an upper deck logo on it. Ninety some ninety-nine. Looks like. There's an SP. There's a silver signature. Power core. I got a couple of those other from other players. Triple crown threat. It's a nice shiny silver card here. Superstar Theater. Collector's Choice. This looks like a good one. An SP, a lot of foil, got a hologram on there. Let me see if I can get this hologram going. There we go. Nice card. $10, $5, who knows. That one might be worth a little bit. A couple bucks, three, three bucks maybe? I don't know. Frank Thomas Power Explosion SP. Definitely not a 20. Well, it's numbered to 4,000. I don't think it's a $20 card. Maybe five. Hot Shots? For some reason, these Hot Shots had some value on them. I don't know. I would say value, but a couple, like a dollar or two. You know, you think it's like a 10 cent card? It's probably more of a 50 cent or dollar card. Frank Thomas is kind of a regular. Here's a all-star game. 97, it looks like. Frank Thomas. StarQuest. Upper Deck MVP. The Big Show. Field advantage. Pretty sure that came in an electric time inversion too. One of my best cards, actually. One of my just when I was getting out, like I I somehow got a pack of upper deck and I pulled a Mike Piazza. I think it was a Mike Piazza like home field advantage electric diamond. I was like, oh my god, I got you know definitely not my team, not my player, or whatever. But you know Piazza was good. I was like, oh my god, I got a Mike Piazza. Home field advantage, electric diamond. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I need to look that up. I may even still have that card somewhere. I need to find like my my old cards. Ninety four, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Electric diamond. Home field. I'm not going to find it. 280. No. Special edition. There's so many. This is the problem. Like, I, I really like the 80s, 70s beforehand. It's like one set. You get the cards in it. That was it. But even here, like in the early 90s, it was like Upper Deck's got like 10 different things going on here. And it's half impossible just to find what you're looking for. Home field. 94 upper deck. But 94 upper deck was home field advantage. Yeah, I'm not going to waste too much time looking at this here. We're already looking at a 20 minute video. I'm going to give up on that one. I'll look it up later. Anyway. A couple more Frank Thomases coming into the home stretch here, guys. Close and personal. Frank Thomas checklist. What's the call? Well, let's do that one. We're going to do that at the end. And a nice, uh, it's actually a pretty nice SP, Frank Thomas. But we're going to finish up on what's the call. 
from Collector's Choice. This is a. Uh, these are fun. Ricky Henderson on second. Mark McGuire has a towering pop up that's veering toward the stands in foul territory. Frank Thomas. Need to focus here. Frank Thomas follows it to the wall and makes the catch. However, after hauling in the catch, Thomas's momentum causes him to fall into the stands. What's the call? Both McGuire and Henderson are out. McGuire is out. Henderson may advance at his peril. McGuire is out, and Henderson advances one base. McGuire is out, and Henderson cannot advance. Let's see what we got here. Stumpy says... Oh, man, it's one of these ones you got to hold in a mirror. Forgot about that. Let's see how good I am at reading this. Since Thomas made the catch and then fell into the stands, McGuire is out. And Henderson... advances one base. What do you say? Pseudo. Pseudomstically? What is that? Anyway, advances one, you can take one base. Yep, that's the answer. Takes one base. C. That's the answer. C. McGuire's out, and Henderson advances. Advances? I don't know what that other word's in there. But anyway, that's the uh, that's the call. All right, if you guys are opening anything up, best of luck to you guys. Don't forget to collect and connect. Thanks so much for watching my video. I really appreciate your time. Everybody have an awesome day.